Welcome. Get off your tiptoes. I'm just, I'm, I'm just tr trying to make me I'm look trying shorter. to slouch a lot. Nah. <laughs> trying to do you a favor. Welcome. To you and your boots. To the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. Uh, this is uh, Daniel. Daniel has some knob. Got a whole passel of knob. Right here. <laughs> Such a child. Yeah. Don't worry, I'll keep it classy. Yeah, totally. that's what we can count on <laughs> with Rex. Keep it classy. All right, let's drink whiskey. We're drinking maybe one of the most classic bourbons that even most non-whiskey drinkers already know about. Have we not done knob? <laughs> the knob. Have we not done We've knob? We've shot 150 odd videos and we haven't done knob creek yet. I feel like you've done the knob. Hang on a second. <laughs> you are a connoisseur of knob, Daniel. You have mastered the knob. Wait, wait, wait. I'm actually looking You up. are a knob enthusiast. Uh, you just... <laughs> You just can't help yourself. You know what I feel like right now? <laughs> the only thing you want to do at the end of every day is sit home, get home, sit down, relax, have some nice knob. knob. <laughs> so, here's the thing. I feel like we're on a uh, family vacation where he's like, where's the damn bait? I just need to get my damn boat and go to the damn river. Yeah, but... <laughs> but, but with <laughs> jokes. Yeah. <laughs> So All we haven't right. done, we haven't done knob. No, we haven't done knob. I, I looked proof. it up. 100 proof. Yep, so that's about the same proof that that treaty oak was this from is, yesterday. This is a strong knob. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna make it through this video. I'm just not, I'm not gonna be able to, I can't do it. Okay, so, uh, dude, mm. this is um, the product of Booker No, Jim Beam, right? Uh, Master Stiller, beam. although he said, they call me Master Stiller, I don't even know what that Would is. Would you rather have some beam or knob? Knob. Yeah. Did I have to say that out loud though? Yeah. Um, See, Beam is like... So here's the cool thing. Uh, this is part of the small batch series of Jim Beam products. Um, Knob Creek, Booker's... Oh, I went blank on the other two. I'm too tired. Someone put in the comments the other two. I, I really you. am that tired. I can cure you. Yeah. Yeah, wait. Pudding. <laughs> You're bringing it. We can't make that a regular thing. <laughs> that cannot be a regular feature. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually, I, uh, I'm glad somebody in the comments recently said, Rex, I uh, totally get peanut butter on some bourbons too. Yeah, and because enough I that was, they don't like it. Yes, I was feeling kind of crazy. Because they're allergic to peanut butter. Right. right. I was feeling kind of crazy. I was like, man, I'm the only one I've ever heard of say there's straight up peanut butter in here. And they're right. If if you're allergic, deathly allergic to peanut butter, right. then you to you, the peanut butter is the smell of death. It's poison. It's the smell of impending death. All right, uh, so I, this was, by the way, Wide123 requested reason, this like eight years ago. The reason why <laughs> we've only been doing these for... That might have been an exaggeration. Seven months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am getting the slightest bit of peanut butter on here. On the nose. A little, uh, little apple sweetness. Yeah. Oh, apple. Yeah. Yeah. Apples and... Uh, I've never thought of apple, but it's red apple. It's like, um, like gala apples. Yeah. And That's sort of... Side of uh, like a slightly sour sit, uh, apple? Yep. Right, not the... It's kind of the cross between a red apple and a Granny Smith. Ooh. But not as tart. It's kind of just a little bit of the sour notes in there. Eric Mansfield. Hey, guys. A few weeks ago, I made a comment that every... That ever since my 19th birthday... He's Canadian, by the way. Oh, we won't, Canada. We won't hold that against you. My home and native land. Is that, the, is that a song? I don't know. I just... <laughs> I think that's part of the thing. The actual can you would make a horrible Canadian. I really would. <laughs> One, you're too much of a. D yeah, I'm not nice enough to be a Canadian. Yeah, but you love the knob. Yeah, I love that knob. I have started drinking whiskey with my first <laughs> bottle being Glenfiddich 12. I mentioned how while I was salmon fishing in Cape Breton, I wanted to visit the Glenora Distillery and try some Glen Breton. Yes. As you, uh, as you guys, along with a few others, said it was a treat. Mm hmm Long story short. It is. I had the opportunity to tour the distillery and try Glen Breton 10. That's it so was cool. an extraordinary single malt. I I'm going to pour it for you. You are going to. Right pour now. It. You will do that right now. I loved how easy... Where's my step ladder? <laughs> <laughs> right. Quit looking at my... <laughs> I loved how easy it was for a beginner to like me, uh, like me to drink and experience all of the subtle nuances and flavors. I would love to see you guys do an episode on Glen Breton Tin, as it is an awesome whiskey that really deserves more attention. 
Uh, if you'd like a song to go with it, try Stan Rogers' cover of Scarborough Settlers' Lament. It's a great folk tune and lots of Scottish Canadian history. I can tell you right now, there's zero chance that this lazy, lazy hobbit pulled up that song. No. I can't even get ice. No, no, here's the thing. Rex, you could not be more wrong. Did you pull up the song? I know the song. I own the album. Where is it? I'm not going to sing it. So I replied to him because I said, no, I don't no, actually like that song. Nobody that wants you to sing it. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. You know what you drink this with is the Stan Rogers song, uh, Barrett's Privateers, which is the chorus... The chorus is, and any good Halifax or Nova Scotian understands this one. But first, wait a minute. I know we just went from a bourbon into single malt, but oh god, that's good. Which one is this one? Mm -mm. This one, dude. When Canada can pull off crap like that, why do we keep getting Canadian club? North America's first single malt whiskey is what it says. Wow, I wonder if that's true. I never actually looked that up. Isn't that good? That yeah, I could absolutely see that coming out of uh, Scotland. Yeah, absolutely. It's astounding. Yeah. So okay, Barrett's Privateers. That chorus is, and you're gonna have to. You may have to bleep part of this, Chad. But this is an actual song. It's one of my favorite Stan Rogers songs, which is "God damn them all." I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold, and we'd fire no guns and shed no tears. But I'm a broken man on a Halifax pier. The last of Barrett's privateers. Yay. That's a damn good song. And I know all eight verses. I'm I, just saying. Uh, I think I'm part Canadian. What's your band name? Uh, Puddin. Knob, the Puddin' Knobs. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Knob Puddin'. It's got too salty. <laughs> Knob Puddin'. <laughs> It's too soft. That's too far. That is really graphic. I think we're going to have to edit that. No, it's just they're very innocent words. <laughs> when, they're, when they're together. <laughs> not pudding. It's really, oh. it's really not ideal. Oh, Brian Lushbow. Brian Lushbow. Question. I'm going to have to email my mom not to watch this, this video. This is really... Should we give a few <laughs> notes? Because the uh, space side. This feels like this would be... Space side. Oh, you went. Wait, you're talking about the Glen. Yes, yes. Okay. No, the the Glen Breton. No, no. We're gonna do a whole video on this one. I just wanted to show them. Okay. In honor. So, so just a little. Come preview. back to the knob. A little preview. <laughs> a little preview. I told you this video was gonna be really hard. We're like twelve years old. <laughs> we really are. <laughs> twelve year olds who were given bottles of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm punch drunk because so, I'm so tired. <laughs> so this uh, feels really at home in the Speyside Highland things. For mm -hmm. So uh, Brian Lushbo. Okay, but that the Knob Creek. Uh, there's a reason that uh, here's what. I, okay, I'm gonna say this about Knob Creek. The one thing I appreciate about Knob Creek is that even though it's really widely known and well marketed, it's a whiskey that non whiskey drinkers can totally enjoy and, and really like as an intro to bourbon. Yeah. It's also a whiskey that even the bourbon snobs will be glad to drink. Hmm. It's one of the only bourbons that I think has a really strong place as the middle ground between, like, oh, I've heard Knobs Creek is great, let's try that. Right. And then the snobs, they don't sh all over it because it's popular. They, they e recognize. Even bourbon snobs will be like, yes, I would love to have some Knob Creek. Sure. Brian Lushbow, question. It seems you guys get pretty got pretty close to blending this time with only two whiskeys. So he's talking about us doing a... Was it the... Oh, uh, those we were doing is we did the Avalor and um, wait, wait. something else. D the Dewar's White Label, wasn't it? Why yeah, we were drinking Dewar's. So, so why does Dewar's have 40 plus whiskeys? Yeah. Now, this is conjecture. So we're into theory territory. But my understanding of how the industry is working over there is that... Once you start having 40 different whiskeys in a blend, what your problem actually was, was how many bottles you needed to make, right? So if you, like Dewar's, are one of the best-selling blended scotches in all of North America, mm -hmm. you can't just have like four distilleries provide you with their product because you're going to be shipping, you know, a half million bottles at a time. Right. And so you're going to need all the whiskey you can get from anybody who will sell so it to it's, you. So it's less about taking a, a palette of various whiskeys right. to get just the right perfect nuanced combination of flavors. It's more of volume. Now, here's the thing. Yes, I, it is volume. So I think the 40 plus, it's a volume problem. Um, but I would say, can you imagine the talent needed from the master blender at Dewar's? Right. 
to dial create, it in. Yeah, yeah, to dial in Dewar's white label from 40 damn distilleries. Right, because... I the, mean, my God! The, the one thing we do know, the bigger the distillery, the less... Variants. Uh, yeah, they have to be like really exact every single yeah. time. Whereas the smaller guys, the variants can be pretty dramatic from year to year. Yeah. Aaron Burdett. After two weeks of binge watching every episode of the Whiskey Vault, I finally caught up. Pretty new to whiskey myself, I decided to pick up my first Isla whiskey. Got Ardenburg mm. 10 and found that I haven't been really living all along. You're our people, yeah. and you're right, until now, you Welcome. have not lived. Welcome to your yeah. people. You will measure your life as before and after this moment. Before and after yeah. Ardenburg 10. Yeah, it's like, well, everything in life, it's like, well, when did that happen? Oh, well, that was about a year before Ardenburg 10. <laughs> like your whole life, that's how you start describing your scenarios. It's like, oh, when did you get this shirt? Oh, that was about six months after the Ardbeg 10. <laughs> mm. So, I love the knob, you love the knob. We both love the knob. We just like to gather around the knob and sip away. I like to hold the knob. <laughs> That's all right. We're going. We're, uh, we're heading out. Pop the top on that knob one more yeah. time. <laughs> we're children. <laughs> we're children. I've always thought of myself as like a really, you know, professional, a professional, mature, <laughs> mature human being. And then you, I'm gonna have knife. really good fork and knife skills. You, it's so good. That's really not you good. Yeah, it's, it's infuriating. <laughs> it's, it's a, this. Well, I eat like all my British family. Connections. This son of a bitch. I can clean a rib to the bone. No, no, no. It's worse than that. You know, like, uh, like, like buffalo wings, chicken wings. These <laughs> yeah, little buffalo wings. So he won't touch it with his hands. So nah. He's gonna knife in the fork and Dude, proceed. It's just so messy. And proceed to pick clean, just to the essence of bone, every scrap <laughs> of meat with a little fork and knife. That's right. Never touching it, and mine will be more clean to the bone than anybody. But they're. Grubby little paws so, all over those damn chicken When I'm wings. having lunch or dinner with Daniel and he's just doing this little, you know, pitiful thing, <laughs> I'll dip my finger in my drink and just flick it at him. Yeah, he really does. <laughs> or I'll leave a used lemon on my plate. There will be no snobs at my table. I think we're good here. Son of a... Turn yeah, your damn I'll, phone I'll off. Work, yes, this is very important you call. I'm a very important person. Uh, <laughs> if you answer that now, we'll be done in 30 minutes. Do we have a toast? We don't have a three-part toast. You're gonna see like three videos. So here's the thing. The day when we're like, hey, give us a three part toast. That was video one of four. Keep the toast coming in. So we got no, three no, no, more no, days. It's, it's toast ideas. It's toast ideas. Toast Get ideas. To, in three parts. We're gonna have a, I can do one. It's Rex called, one. It's called the Official Whiskey Vault Toast Project. Okay, we, we have three the title parts now. A part for Daniel, a part for Rex, a part for you guys. And please make mine not talk about pudding. Pudding. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers to you guys. Alcohol may be man's worst enemy, but scripture says, love your enemies. Cheers. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.